Hello, Internet. I wanted to talk about something I've been noticing recently on a lot of channels that I follow, and that is adverts for a product called NordVPN. And this video really isn't about NordVPN in particular. It's about VPN services as a whole. So what I say will generally probably apply to almost everything with NordVPN, but it's not limited to that, and there always have been and will be companies selling this kind of thing. Not always, but uh, I, or, that was a little bit of an exaggeration, it, or it's dramatic language that I get used to, people get used to, and they say things in a way that's not strictly accurate. Part of being human. But these things have been around for a long time. I actually used to work for a company that made a VPN software and service. So I think I'm probably pretty qualified to comment on what VPNs give you and what they don't. And the way it normally works is you have a company, they run a whole bunch of servers all over the world, and they also make software that you can use or very rarely they just give you software configurations. Generally they'll make a VPN client that will tell your operating system on your phone, on your computer, whatever, to activate a P VPN and connect to it. And you might connect to it locally and your traffic flows through the VPN and it comes out somewhere else. That's how VPNs work. Um, at least in, in this case, there are some exceptions. You can have corporate VPNs, things like that, where you really are not trying to get traffic to go out anywhere else on the internet. But by and large, a VPN, you have traffic going in somewhere and coming out somewhere else. And this does provide a few potential benefits, uh, but the benefits are also often overstated. <clears throat> what does it really get you? One of the things that can get you is that if you have a very unreliable local, like if you're on an unreliable, unreliable is not the word, if you're on a very shady local internet connection where you know that people are going to be doing something sneaky, they're going to be recording your requests and stuff like that, it gives you a, a certain amount of protection from that, particularly if your DNS requests also go through a VPN service. Um, you really want to check on that though, because it, with, it used to be that VPNs were a lot more important in the era when not everybody was doing HTTPS, which nowadays most web traffic is encrypted and most web traffic is what you're going to get, uh, is the, the stuff where you really don't want people sniff, uh, sniffing on what you're doing. The amount of unencrypted traffic that people have with with sites on the internet right uh, right now is way less than it was five years ago. Uh, certainly, way less than it was ten years ago. So the need for VPN has decreased because people are not going to be seeing the content of your. Uh, by content, I mean like they're they're not going to be able to see when you visit a web page. They won't be able to retrieve images. From your, converse, uh, from your web browser's conversation with the web surfer somewhere because HTTPS put most of that in the past. What they can do is they can look at your DNS requests and see at least what sites are you going to. Uh, they can also look at the IPs uh, to, to see wh what you're going to, but that has become a little bit less indicative uh, because multiple sites can be serviced on the same IP address, uh, things like that. Again, modern the, the modern web is uh, more resilient to a lot of these things than the web used to be. So really DNS is probably the thing you care the most about. And then to a lesser extent, uh, IP stuff, because really all they can do is say, see where you've been. They won't necessarily see the content of your conversations anymore because that's handled by HTTPS. Uh, the other thing is they can see where you are. 
Uh, well, I'm sorry, this is a different day because if you're on a local network, they're always going to see where you are, roughly speaking. You're going to be connected to one of the routers and generally they're going to notice when you're connected to their network. But internet sites then, this is the other half of the equation, internet sites, uh, if you're just connecting from your laptop on a public network somewhere or your home or something like that, they'll be able to know where your home is because the place that you've connected from has a certain IP address. And it is not that hard to, uh, to do queries to find out where physically, roughly physically, uh, a certain IP address is. It's, it's not a 100% thing, but you can issue something called a Whois query uh, against a range of IP addresses. Um, you can do a trace route to an IP address and get the names of hosts and usually there's some geographic information embedded in in those host names. Uh, so you do a trace route, you, you look at the addresses between, you'll see, oh, this person is in Hong Kong. Oh, this person is in London. Uh, you might get a little bit of the neighborhood of London, something like that. Whereas if you go through a VPN, then if they're looking at the IP address, where are your connections coming from? They'll see the traffic coming out of a VPN endpoint but they won't see anything beyond that. So those are the two things that VPNs actually really give you. They, they give you uh, places not being able to see where you physically are, and they give you a certain very limited amount of privacy in terms of who you're talking to through DNS uh, and uh, yeah, most, mostly through DNS uh, by, um, what they so so let, let's let's talk about those those two things it's common to use a vpn to pretend that you're in another country you, you connect to a local endpoint or even a remote endpoint and the vpn will know where you're coming from because they have to talk to you but your traffic is then relayed on through them and your uh, and the source of your communications is obscured so if you, uh, for example, want to retrieve some uh, video content that's only available in the UK, then you can do it through a VPN. Now, a lot of those places, they might not have licensing agreements for where you are in the world. So you can sometimes see some videos that you can't see where you live. So that's kind of cool, except if they're gonna care about that, they can also decide to just block all known VPN exit points and they can keep on working to keep those lists updated. Some, some places also dislike Tor, uh, which is kind of sort of VPN, kind of sort of not, um, probably closer to being a VPN than otherwise, uh, or like one of these big commercial VPNs. Um, but you can decide, I really, really want to be uh, good about these licensing agreements. I, so I'm just going to block all traffic when I can figure out it's going through a VPN. And that's reasonable of them to do. Uh, Netflix might choose to do it, uh, YouTube, Amazon, so on. Um, uh, but if they don't take steps to, to block all known VPN uh, endpoints, and there's a chance that they'll miss some, then you can potentially get access to video content uh, or other licensed content uh, that is not licensed for where you happen to be. Or you can retain such access if you're on a trip, like. I'm going to be doing a trip to Germany sometime in June. And uh, while I'm there, I know that probably uh, YouTube is going to cut off access to all the videos that I have on my watch later list. Well, not all of them, but many of them because they're region locked. Um, whereas if, if I decided to use a VPN on my tablet, I could probably prevent some of that, maybe, depending on if Google cares or not. I also might be able to download games on Steam using uh, prices that are in a different country, stuff like that. But again, a lot of companies are going to take efforts to block any access through most of these big public VPNs, through Tor, stuff like that. Um, but it's an advantage. It, it is something which is potentially useful. And of course, if you are visiting spotty network uh, uh, spotty wireless uh, networks, going to a cafe where you really don't trust 
the people running it, you, you're, you think they're shady. Uh, you can potentially get some benefit on a VPN. There are some things that VPNs don't give you, or at least very rarely give you. And that's a speed boost. A VPN generally will make your traffic slower because you are restricted by the slowest link between you and the VPN endpoint, then the internal infrastructure between the endpoint and the outpoint uh, within the VPN, and then the uh, the the outpoints to wherever you're trying to connect to on the other end. Whatever of those is the slowest is the slowest that you're going to get. Whereas potentially, uh, if if you're just connecting directly to the site that you want to go to, uh, then usually uh, you're going to get uh, you don't have all those other things that could potentially slow you down. So most of the of the time, a VPN will make all your internet traffic slower. Very, very rarely a site might decide to be slow to a particular country, to a particular network or something, and you might be able to get around it by using a VPN, but that is an extremely rare exception. Most of the time, things are just going to be slower through a VPN. And I, I know that some of the, the NordVPN uh, little adverts that are usually done by non-technically sophisticated people, they make claims that NordVPN will often make your network traffic faster. That's just a lie or the person's confused uh, because that is not how network traffic works. Uh, there's no way that uh, apart from if a site is deliberately being slow to you or in extremely rare other circumstances where you can do things with jumbo packets and stuff like that. There, there are extremely rare exceptions where where it might be true, but generally it's not true. A VP, uh, any VPN service is generally going to make your network slower. And you just kind of have to deal with that. And unless, again, of course, a site is deliberately trying to be slow uh, for you or your country or something like that. Um, so, uh, oh, and, and the, the other thing is if you are in a country that has really terrible laws and a spy culture and blah, 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 that, uh, and no, the United States is not that, most Western countries are not that. But if you are in, in Egypt or uh, China or uh, North Korea or something, and you somehow have internet access, uh, you potentially can get around a lot of your country's censorship by using a VPN, but if your country cares enough to have technically uh, sophisticated means to censor, then they are probably going to be actively trying to block you from connecting to a VPN outside the country, or they'll be running a fake VPN service and they'll just catch your traffic and spot where you're trying to go. And you've made yourself very, very visible by saying, yes, I'm one of these people who's trying to dodge what my government is doing. So expect a knock on your door one way or the other if you expect to use a VPN to get around to tyrannical countries' uh, rules. Uh, you're, you're gambling with, uh, with a lot of things. If you think that's going to work, it's, it's probably not going to work the way you think it will. If you are in the United States and you're doing illegal things and you think a VPN is going to protect you, that's another mistake. Um, Having worked at a VPN company, law enforcement will have established relationships with these companies and they will fairly frequently send a warrant and they will get access to your logs. They will see where you're connecting to uh, and you probably can't prevent that. You are also going to mark yourself again as somebody who's using a VPN. You're going to bring attention to yourself. Uh, and there's no real avoiding that. I know that the Tor people, the big fans of Tor, are going to, to make uh, an argument here that what if we just get everybody to use a VPN? They're not going to block all of us. They probably will. Um, and you're never going to get everybody. And the Tor people are so obnoxious that that's another reason why they're not going to get everybody. Uh, a lot of them are just weird an anarchists and libertarians and so on. And uh, those people are annoying to most people. So really ignore the performance arguments, ignore the, poss uh, the thought that you might be able to, to get around law enforcement and zoom in on the potential access to content in another country, because that might happen. 
provided that whatever service you're trying to get access to is not going to just decide to block your ass, um, you, you might be able to get around some country restrictions and see some stuff that's mostly intended for another country. Maybe. But there's a good chance that they'll, they'll just block all the known VPN outpoints. Um, and uh, then you're not going to have that. And, of course, if you really legitimately are on an extremely sketchy local network, then they might be able to see uh, your DNS queries and the IP addresses of places you're trying to connect to. But they're not going to be able to see, in the same way that the Internet used to be, the content of your web traffic. They'll see who you talk to. They won't see uh, your messages. So, and, and they'll also see, to a certain extent, the bandwidth that you use but that's normally not as sensitive. So really the, the advantages of VPN in the modern era are significantly less than they used to be. In my view, it's not worth subscribing to one of these services. Uh, I, and again, I, this is different than, it, than the way it was before it, everything was on HTTPS. Um, in the era when there was HTTP traffic, in the era when people regularly still used POP3 and IMAP to retrieve email onto, onto their computer, things were different. But by and large, we're not in that early to mid era of the internet. We're in the late stage internet. Well, I mean, late is relative, but uh, since probably about 2000, uh, I don't know, sometime around 2012, 2013, the percentage of internet traffic where the content is encrypted has skyrocketed. So the, the act, so bad sites getting access to the content of your messages, that's in the past. Or the content of your messages, of your web traffic, all they'll, they'll see potentially is who you talk to. Um, so if you're really lucky, you can get access to some more content from another country. That's the real main advantage of a uh, of one of these commercial VPN providers. Really, if you're traveling to coffee shops where you don't trust them not to be super shady, just tether with your phone. Don't bring out your laptop and connect to a network where you think somebody is really extremely shady. But even if they were, they're probably not going to get anything all that interesting out of you anyhow. Like, ooh, this person connected to Gmail. This person went to a certain sports site or something like that. Like, what are they going to do with that? Probably not a lot. They're not going to get passwords out of that. Um, so you are, if you're going to get one of these services, you're paying them usually a monthly or yearly fee with the expectation that uh, you're you're going to get uh, be able to access some content that you couldn't otherwise access. That's not a great bet. It's not a completely impossible bet, but it's not a great bet. Uh, so if you're going to do it, test it, test it frequently. And if the main sites that, that your chosen uh, VPN uh, provider uh, that, that it actually gave you access to that you didn't have access to before, or if, if the content that you can get stops becoming available, then be ready to cancel real quick because uh, it is. it would not be surprising if, if you decide, hey, I want to see Netflix UK or BBC content or something. If the BBC blocks you, then your, your reason for subscribing to that service went away. So try to avoid any really long commitments. Test it very thoroughly before you make any financial commitment. And know that a lot of these uh, these companies are really, really shady. Um, now, I haven't actually seen any direct NordVPN adverts. It's always typically been some content creator who doesn't understand networking or computers very well making claims about NordVPN. And often these claims are wrong, like the, the generally faster performance. That's just not the way networking works. Uh, so those are my thoughts on commercial VPNs. Uh, if you want to argue about this, I'm happy to argue. Um, but I, I was a site reliability engineer in a big tech company 
Uh, I've been a, a programmer for many years. I understand infrastructure quite well. Um, you're probably not going to catch me making stupid mistakes. Hopefully. I mean, you never know. I, I, there's, it, there's the potential that I, I said something stupid, but I don't think so. I don't, I don't think I've really even gone out on a limb on any of this. Uh, just most of the time, VPNs are not a good deal. Bye-bye.